beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Let's lift our hands and bless him. Great is my God. He is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Yeah, great are you, Lord. You are worthy, worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. Worthy to be praised. Worthy your hands and your voices. Give him praise. Hey, great Bless the name of the mighty one. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. Yeah. You're beautiful. The heavens and earth adore you.
You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. You're wonderful in this place. You're wonderful. You are glorious. You are glorious. Glorious. You are glorious. Glorious. You are glorious. Don't be tired of worshiping His presence. Glorious, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reward. Say, you are glorious, my God. Beautiful, you are. Help me say. Father, we declare that we love you. From everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. Let the name of the Lord be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. And let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. We praise you with the sound of the instruments. We praise you with the clashing of the cymbal. We praise you with voices lifted up. For you alone art God. You sit upon the circle of the heavens. And you rule with the scepter of righteousness. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Your mercy is being new every morning. In majesty ride, O great one, in the midst of they that love you. From everlasting to everlasting, we declare that the nations will sing your praise. The nations will lift your voice. The nations will lift your banner. And every tribe and every tongue and every nation will acknowledge that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. For you are glory. In all the earth, you are glorious. Yeah, yeah, you are glorious. Yeah. You are powerful. You are powerful. You are powerful. Yeah. You are powerful. Ask the Lord for a visitation tonight. Like the dew of heaven, oh God. That brings freshness to the grass. Let the heavens be open and let the rain fall upon us. In the name of Jesus. We bless you. Majesty. I acknowledge you, the doer of every great thing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Some may trust in horses and others on chariots, but we will trust in the name of our Lord. And they sang the songs of Miriam and they said, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Even the horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea. We bless you for your healing, for your deliverance, for the power of your word to change and build, for authority, for your presence. We give you praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, we enthrone you. Sing it from your heart. And we proclaim. His presence is mighty in our midst tonight. Standing here in the midst of all. We raise you high with our praise. Lord, build your throne. And as we worship you, come and build your throne. And as we worship you, as we worship you, and as we worship One more time as we worship. And as we worship, come and build your throne. In this place tonight. be lifted high tonight your people have come to receive and to be changed in the name of Jesus I pray that your power will be available to heal to deliver to bless that your word will transform us in the name of Jesus hallelujah God bless you please be seated it's good to be back and it's good to see everyone those of us standing really apologize appreciate all the workers and everybody for your diligence even while I was away thank you so much and um, I want to appreciate all of us again for consistently submitting ourselves to the dealings of the spirit there is a formula for impact there is a formula for carrying heavy weights of the presence of God there is a formula for affecting a generation. And what is happening to you is the building that will lead to that. You are satisfying that condition. And you may not look like it now, but by and large, you will see the beauty and the glory of the Lord arise in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is taking us somewhere. And we give him praise for where we see him taking us. Hallelujah. Once again, I welcome every one of us. Thank you so much for being around. I want to talk to us tonight in a way that I hope will challenge us. This is a preparatory teaching for the series that we're about to start next month. And... Um, I trust that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Tonight's teaching is very important and I am praying, I am praying that not only do we pay the price to come here every week and listen to the messages, but I'm praying and hoping from the depth of my heart that we are submitting ourselves to these teachings. It's amazing how lives are being transformed and changed. Hallelujah. 
And I pray in the name of Jesus that we will keep changing. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your head and pray in tongues and say, Father, do something in my mind and my life. Please pray. Now is not the time to stare around carelessly. Be focused and pray. Lay your hands on your head and pray. Do something upon this mind. I allow you to flow through me. Let my mind not be a limitation to my destiny. There is a voice that you have given me that my generation must hear. And everything that constitutes a limitation must leave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last week, we listened again to the message, hallelujah, that I had preached about allowing the kingdom of God to find expression. And in that teaching, I began to say how that the limitation of the impact of men is not the power or the ability of God but our mind from the realm where we allow our wills, our emotion and our intellect to come under submission to the government of Christ and that if we can satisfactorily do that, there is no limit to which God will be able to use us. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. Let's begin tonight. I want to establish a few things and then we'll pray. You make all things new, yes, you make all things new, and I will follow you forward. That's what he's doing in someone's life tonight. You God has no favorites in the kingdom. Listen to me. God has no favorites in the kingdom. God loves everyone in the kingdom equally, but he does not trust everyone equally. God has no favorites in the kingdom. But the operation of God, when you read the Bible, it makes it look as though God had a soft spot for certain people and he seemed to reject others until you understand the character of the operation of the kingdom. You may think God has favorites. God has no favorite preachers. God has no favorite businessmen. God has no favorite students. God has no favorite history makers. Every man is saddled with the responsibility of charting the course of his destiny and the degree to which we come into alignment with God's precepts is the degree to which it looks like God is tilting towards our direction it's very important that I say this because we live in a society that the difference is clear in everything among preachers the difference is clear there are men of God struggling and struggling and struggling to make impact. There are men of God struggling to do what they call ministry. In the world of finance, there are those making impact and there are those living as if God hates them. In the world of family life, there are others raising award-winning children. There are others raising arm robbers and cowards and thieves and and nuisance to society in the world of impact there are those that the hand of god is mighty upon they are shaking lands and territories and yet there are others scrounging and scrambling for relevance what is responsible for this difference could it be that god decided to choose others could it be that god just hated others is that really it? 
what would be responsible brothers and sisters for a man who rises up as a nobody the map of your village not being on the map and yet you rise to be a global phenomenon where people say thank God you were born thank God you did not die blessed is the womb that produced this child what makes that difference that a man will be born a pauper with rain falling and yet at the end of his life he is a generational blessing his name becomes an access key to favor that every time you say i am associated with sam they say which sam because of that access is given what is responsible for this difference in society It's not enough just to love God and know God and pray in tongues. A true apostolic ministry prepares people to be agents of societal transformation. It's not enough just to pray in tongues. The Bible never said you are the light of the church. It said you are the light of cosmos, the world. There is a level of impact and illumination that comes from the church. The key, the key to world evangelization is not necessarily evangelism as we know. It is evangelism but not one-on-one -on -one preaching and sharing tracts. We will never win souls that way till Jesus comes. The key to transgenerational impact and bringing territories to the submission of the Christ is hidden in one word, influence. 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 The mystery word that holds the key to compelling generations to come to the Lordship of Christ. Everybody say influence. Influence will do more than tracts will do. Influence will do more than crusades will do. Influence. At every given point in your life, your decisions, your values are being altered by someone you look up to as a role model. Consciously or unconsciously. And therefore the key to bringing earth, our territories, cosmos, to the obedience of Christ is ascending intentionally to a position of kingdom influence that grants us access to the minds of people and that they can, by our influence, buy into our ideology which seeks to enthrone Christ as king. This is the gospel. The gospel is not just a message that saves sinners. The gospel is an ideology. Like a terrorist ideology. The gospel is an ideology that seeks to enthrone Christ and his purpose. First, that spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. Then, the influence of his jurisdiction across the strata of society. If we are not doing this, there is no reason why we should be alive. No matter what kind of conference, convention, impartation, if it does not lead to what I just told you, then it's a waste. The summary of all that I just said is called kingdom advancement. The intentional strategic frontiering of the influence of the Christ in the earth. This is consistent with the eternal plan of God. What is the eternal plan of God? According to Colossians, that all things be headed up in the Christ. And I told you that that plan of God, all mankind and creation will come to the submission of the Christ by a principle called the reflection principle. The reflection principle. An entity confers power on another as a proof of his might and royalty. The mystery of the sun and the moon. The moon does not have a glory of its own. It reflects the glory of the sun. If you want to see the excellency of the brightness of the sun, you look at the moon. The degree to which the moon aligns with the sun is the degree to which it, it shines. Hallelujah. Christianity is not just a religion to keep you busy until Jesus comes. Christianity is not just a religion to keep you until you get a job or until you graduate or until you get married. Christianity is an ideology. The faith life is an ideology. It's a movement. It's a cause. There is something we are doing. God has an intention in his mind. And he expects every inhabitant in the earth to be given an opportunity to understand that. 
his emphasis right now is building his spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men and that's what we call being born again the establishment of the reign and the rule of the christ in the hearts of men not just coming for altar call Cult, altar call is not enough to get you born again it gets you saved but to be born anew and to be transformed the christ needs to be established in your heart the degree to which the word of God finds expression in your life, the degree to which you have submitted to the principles of the kingdom is the degree to which Jesus has become Lord of your life. Are we, are we understanding? One of the biggest limitations I, I taught us that there are two major limitations to the advancement of the kingdom. That the first... The Bible calls it the gate of hell. That is just a recap. And I told us that the gate of hell defines the scope of Satan and every arsenal that he brings. His tricks, his strategies that he brings to bring the whole world into deception. But that's not even the biggest limitation. The biggest of all limitation is the mind. Our mental alignment to the ways of the kingdom. This is what is responsible for your prosperity. This is what is responsible for your impact. This is what is responsible for the flow of God's power. Now, preachers have erroneously taught people. Every time you talk about the mind, preachers shift people to, they shift that topic to business people and entrepreneurs and, and um, um, proprietors and all those who have to deal with the corporate life. So here they are sweating and believing they are training their spirit. Whenever you talk about mind, they say, no, 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 it's, it's all right. I'm not a businessman. The mind is the access point for the spirit to find expression in your life. You ignore your mental development. You ignore the alignment of your mind to the government of the Christ. You will fail in life in every respect. I can never change you until I change your mind. I can never change you till I alter your ideology because your life revolves around your thinking, around your perception about life. There's nothing I can do about your current situation until you are willing to submit your mind to something better. It's God speaking to us. So let's read Proverbs 23. Verse 7. Help us, Holy Spirit. One, to read. Just the first phrase. You don't need to read all of those ones down. One, to read. For as he thinketh in his heart or in his mind, so is he. It equates the summation of your ideologies to the quality of your life. Meaning the quality of my life as an ambassador of the kingdom, as a husband, as a father, as a leader, is dependent on my, the sum total of the ideologies that inform my decisions. Profound truth. Profound truth. That a man's life is helplessly at the mercy of his mindset. I've done many teachings about mindsets and I will not stop until a transition happens. The key to persuasion is repetition. Not information. Repetition. When a truth is repeated, it, it becomes a priority to you. And that's the goal of this teaching. God is doing a mighty work in your life. God is transforming mighty man in this place. And he won't stop, he won't stop till you look just like him. He won't stop, no, he won't stop till his church looks like him. He won't stop, he won't stop till you look just like him. You know why I must preach this? Because seated where you are 
is the destiny of thousands that have been connected to your grace and your life. And your refusal to rise will make thousands to go to hell. Millions to perish. Imagine if there was no Benny Hinn. Imagine if there was no Reinhard Bunker. Right? Imagine if all of the mighty men that have brought great impact in this generation did not rise. I refuse to let your tears stop me. I refuse to let your anger with me stop me. I will teach it until that transformation happens. You may not see a need to thank me now. But as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, when you see the excellency of your life above that of your contemporaries, you will find a reason to say, Lord, I thank you. The training process is always difficult because mankind has been designed to live in a comfort zone. We are designed to live around an environment that massages our current level. But every time the word begins to come, the first thing that happens is your current mentality will resist it because it knows that it will have to choose to accept that it is wrong and change. And accepting false is one of the biggest um, ego stinging things for mankind to say, oh, I'm wrong. I may not have gotten it well this way. So we prefer to excuse it away and remain. Friends live together for as long as they think together. The moment one begins to think above, the environment starts driving him away. Right? I'm challenging you because there's something about your life. Koinonia is an apostolic platform. Only with the eye of the spirit will you see the kind of mighty men that have been raised. There are more people. This crowd constitutes only less than 10% of the total people who will listen to this message. And so I'm speaking to nations. I'm speaking to individuals. I'm speaking to territories. Somebody will be listening to this message who is lying down at the end of his life and say, God, is this how my life will be? And God is saying there is a way out. The way out is not giving you money. The way out is not parting you when you do not deserve to be parted. The way out is to prune and build and to furnish. It may cost you tears. But let me tell you, anybody that loves you, see, a mentor, a mentor is not your friend. Are you getting what I'm saying? I taught the school of ministry students that there are three spiritual platforms on which reception and impartation happens. Number one, a father and a son platform. A transfer from a father to a son. Number two, a transfer from a mentor to a mentee or an apprentice. Number three, a transfer from a teacher to a student. You cannot transfer knowledge from colleague to colleague. No, sir. It's against the law of impartation. That means every time you want to receive, one must assume the position of the greater and another the lesser. Even if it is for the purpose of the impartation. Are you getting what I'm saying? So by the time, because many of us may watch people, if Pastor Jakes comes up right now to preach, I will not just stand and say, I'm the great man of God, he's my friend. No, I submit myself immediately to the grace that is teaching. And immediately I begin to receive. Are you learning something? Society will teach you otherwise. That's why there are lots of failures outside. Let me tell you the truth. I give you a guarantee. If you listen to what I am giving you and you sit down honestly under these teachings, you will never, never be a disappointment to the kingdom. I give you that as a guarantee. But the problem is to what degree are we willing to submit ourselves to the dealings of God? To what degree? Every time we come to God, many of us come with our bag of errors and we sit down hoping that God will add to us. Sometimes he doesn't need to add. He needs to take from you because what you currently have is what is destroying you. There is an ideology that is resisting the power of God in your life. There is an ideology that is resisting the move of the spirit. There is an ideology that is limiting your financial life. There is an ideology that is limiting your ministry, limiting every aspect of your life. And when you contend for light and you receive that light, no power in existence has the capacity to keep you down, not for too long. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. 
as I walk around, as I travel around, I've had the privilege of traveling to different territories. I study culture a lot. In fact, whenever we travel for administration, if time allows us, we always take a little tour around the city to see the way of life of the people. I like to study how people think. I like to study what their priorities are. I like to study what, what constitutes a taboo for them. What is the scope of their ideology? And I am amazed. I see the reason why Africa is where it is. I see the reason why very few men out of a large crowd ever, ever touch the true grace of God in their lives. I see the reason why though many go to school and graduate, they end up failures. Failures from the perspective of the kingdom. Failures in impacting their generation and being relevant for the kingdom. I see why zealous people will start out well and end as if God left them. There is something that we consistently violate. And that is the power of transformation. The power of transformation. The power of transformation. I can't tell you this enough, Koinonia. Listen to me. The power of transformation. You can rise from where you are. I don't care what the limitations are. Stop regretting what you are going through and what your father brought you into or what your mother brought you into and concentrate on the transformation that will bring you up. Otherwise, you will sit in that position of regret and watch your children later join you. That's what has happened. We have a generation of irresponsible people. Spiritually irresponsible. Mentally irresponsible. Physically irresponsible. There has been a transgenerational game of blaming people. One generation blaming another for their failures. One generation blaming another. Nigerians blame government. Africans blame their parents. They blame institutions. Our refusal to turn and say, what can I do to live where I am? Gideon was a little boy who was hiding. He heard of the miracles that happened. And now he was there reduced and an angel appears to him and says, Oh thou mighty man of value, can you be the changer of this pattern in a generation? Let me tell you something. My message will mean very little to you and you will hate me if you are someone with a mindset that believes someone somewhere is responsible for your success and your advancement. If you have that kind of mindset here, your first assignment tonight is repent. Can we have the windows open? I think the rain is... Hallelujah. Everyone say in the name of Jesus, I take full responsibility for my current position spiritually financially socially i take full responsibility and i am willing to pay the price to change that pattern say it one more time in the name of jesus i refuse resentment i refuse blaming people i make up my mind that from today i take full responsibility for the outcome of everything in my life that's right that's the, the decision that begins to change your life you say this among your colleagues and they will insult you some of you are even feeling nervous as you are saying this because it is very comfortable to believe your father is the reason why you are not serving God that foolish man was a herbalist but what of the mercy of God that has brought you to see the light? There are many ladies who believe it's the wrong training of their mothers that has stopped them from marriage. There are many people who believe. There are preachers, there are many pastors in different ministries who believe that the reason why they are not rising is because the geo or the man of God is not laying hands on them to do impartation. 
my challenge to you before we continue is that language of responsibility please pray one minute say lord i make up my mind pray pray open your mouth don't just pray in your heart willingly and consciously before heaven this day this day this day the 22nd of may i make up my mind that from today i begin to take full responsibility for the outcome of my life if any change will happen it depends on you and god if your generation must hear your voice it depends on you and god pray Zika Pratoko Soto Lama Karyada Baladaba Shekete Pratege de Bosch Pray Lekata Paka Proto Soto Barike de Bele de Bokoriadaba Pray I choose to be different. I come from a family where no one has reason. Excuses here and there. We are from Kogi State, that's why. Excuses here and there. We are from the north, that's why. Excuses here and there. My father was a drunkard. My mother was a prostitute. I was born out of wedlock. Kill that excuse. It's a deception from the pit of hell. Manda kala prati gele boko so prandi geri ata bahashara balada bara 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 bara. I'm a lady, that's why they should take care of me. Kill that excuse. I have failed, that's why I tried and failed. Kill that excuse. I gave God a chance and He didn't do anything. Kill that excuse. Hallelujah. Listen. Never try to waste your time. I'm giving you an advice that will bless you. Never try to waste your time investing in people who have not come to a point where they are willing to take responsibility for their lives. You will be casting your pearl before swine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Never waste your time and energy attempting to communicate truths to people who have not indicated a genuine passion for transformation. You will waste your time. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart. The summation of my ideologies. So I believe my father is a wicked man. Because he would have sold the car and given me the money. Because I had to fend for school for myself. And that ideology becomes your template of interpreting life. Hallelujah. Let me share a few things. Your mindset determines your response to God, to people, to Satan, to challenges, and to success. Your mindset, your ideologies determines your response to God, people, Satan, challenges, and ultimately success. The Bible keeps telling us again and again Solomon speaking again and again and encouraging believers of the need to guard our heart. God is in it. Let's look at that scripture very quickly. Proverbs chapter, I believe, 4, 4 verse 23. Am I right? 4 verse 23. Let's look at it quickly. Yes. It says, keep your heart with all what? Diligence, seriousness, tenacity. It says, for out of it are the issues of life. Brothers and sisters, listen. 
Listen to me. Please look at me. I submit to you. I have seen people suffer. I have seen the bitter weep that the negligence to this truth will bring to any life and bring to any family. You can choose to listen to what I am telling you and contend for change. Or you can stand where you are and watch life whip you until you lose your faith, lose your salvation and ultimately end up in hell. Is that serious? Keep your heart. It is your responsibility. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it, out of your ideologies are the issues, the decisions that frame your life and destiny. Your mindset about culture, your mindset about women, your mindset about God, your mindset about money and prosperity, your mindset about increase, your mindset about hard work and diligence. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you. Wishing has never changed the life of any man. Wishing only, only gives you a false emotional consolation. Oh, I wish I would be anointed like Pastor Jakes. Oh, I wish I would be able to do this. Oh, I wish that God will use me. I know he will use me one day. Forget that deceit. There is what you do here and now that makes you know whether you are usable or otherwise. Let me give you a little preview into the financial series that we're going to be having. In it, I teach on the power of decisions. Do you know the difference between a decision and a wish? This is it. I want to drink water. It's a decision. That's the water there. I want to drink water is a wish or a strong desire. I decide to drink water means I set it as a goal and I am ready to find out what it takes to get that water. Are you seeing that now? A decision is different from a desire in that a decision is backed up with the willingness to satisfy the conditions to get that result. Many people wish for the anointing. Oh, I wish, I wish. Many people wish for a big church. Many people wish for a million naira or million dollar status. I'm a millionaire in the name of Jesus Christ. No power will stop me. Uh, stories. This is why people look at Christian and think, they think we are idiots. Because we keep fooling and kidding ourselves again and again. Say, I decide to make impact. I decide to be relevant. I decide to do big things for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Guard your heart with all diligence. Why? Because your life is a reflection of, of, of your ideologies. I've taught this, but let me recap on it again very quickly. Remember I told you that there is a law the law of manifestation and that law is that your physical reality eventually becomes a reflection of your mindset the inner workings of your mind is what will eventually become your physical reality are you getting what i'm saying that means your physical life is a revelation of the summation or the quality of your ideologies by and large your mentality about prosperity will show physically. By and large, your mentality about God and the principles of the kingdom will show. By and large, your mentality about marriage will show in children calling you a loving daddy or a stupid Dracula who is killing them. By and large. By and large, your mentality about success and productivity will speak Meaning, our physical environment right now is a gradual reflection of the reality in our mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? Watch this. Compare a general overseer of a ministry or president or whatever. Or let me use a, a term that is now 
compare a CEO, right, of a company who sits down in a large office. You know how intimidating the office can be. With AC, flat screen, right? All kinds of things. Cup of coffee, tea, all kinds of things. And a secretary around. And you see the poor people in the company angry at their director, wicked man. He's the one enjoying. And the megad is there opening gates hundreds of times a day and receiving 10 or 15,000. And the megad convinces himself that the ogre is not fair. This man is not doing anything. He just sits down on a chair, signs papers, writes a few things, and he's getting millions. My challenge is this transfer them for two months transfer them meaning tell them may god we hereby give you this office is yours for two months and tell the ogre go to the gate the ogre is going to do something in that gate that will make people stop coming to the office they will start waiting at the gate there is a mentality are you getting my point he's going to look and say is there something we can do is there something we can do right there at the gate he will start consultancy services. Right there at the gate, he will think and say, how can I reduce this effort? How can I reduce the physical effort? And then he may create a chain or a rope where he just sits down and drive or try to make a digital gate. Are you seeing that now? Whereas the other man sits down holding one wood and metallic detector and, 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 and a, the keys, bunch of keys to a gate. Meanwhile, let's go to our man in the office there. The man is in the office and when he sits down, the next thing is he opens the fridge, sees apples, dates, all kinds of things and he says, my soul, find rest. He forgets. No, no, no. See how cheap his mindset is. He forgets that that company is at the mercy of his decisions and he's eating. And quickly he sees some little money and he carries that money quickly and hides it. And he thinks, what can I sell quickly? And they say, oh, God, generator has spoiled. He say, leave it there. In two months, that office becomes his mindset. Are you seeing that now? You come in and see it dirty, scattered. They've sold a lot of things. They've sold the company generator. They've done all sorts of things. Right? Workers are not paid. Whereas you find out that the the blessed man, the CEO, has changed the gate. And he will make it become something. What is the difference? Their mindset. They think the difference is money. They think the difference is expensive suits and expensive cars. No. Those things are a reflection of something. When you see a man mightily used by God, his life is a reflection of something. Are we, are we following? Are we together? The next time you see a man you consider to be anointed or blessed, do not envy what you see. Try to buy into their mind and transfer it to yourself and your life will follow suit. Are we blessed? That's why success is, is transferable. If I can transfer to you what is in my mind, you will be like me. But you will stop at my limit. If I can transfer to you what I have and challenge you to rise higher, you will be higher than me. You see that? Preachers preach out of the abundance of their mindset. A preacher who is not, for instance, an entrepreneur and knows nothing about leadership and organization has a pattern that he teaches people. All he would tell people is, just pray and be serious. The God of favor, God of honor, God of this, the God who located me will locate you and the people shout amen and they stop there and they become a congregation of weak and beggarly people. The preacher himself not knowing why he's successful. He thinks he's successful because he's preaching. No. Guard your heart. There is a mentality you have right now that is stopping friends from you. There are some of you, you can never have friends because there are certain mindsets and ideologies that drive every destiny helper who comes into your life. Something about you 
resents people from you. And if you do not take the time to study it and change and say, I'm like that. My mother never had any friend, only me. You see it, the transference. Let me talk about two quick ideologies or mental attitudes that have sponsored failure in the lives of people. Right? Number one is the mindset that bets what we know today to be low self-esteem. Write that word down. It's very important. I'm about to say something that will bless you. Shabbat Shabbat what is low self-esteem or what we call complex? Please look up. Low self-esteem is the feeling or the mindset that brings a man to a position where he believes or he is convinced consciously or subconsciously that you are not good enough, that you are perpetually at a state of disadvantage. That there is always something you need to do to your life to meet up to a standard. A status quo. Are you getting my point? It's a terrible mindset. A terrible mental state of being. Because it produces dangerous fruits. And we're about to see a few of them. Let me tell you. The foolishness of many people in society. From preachers to businessmen to fathers to leaders is motivated by this poisonous mindset subtle but dangerous low self-esteem what does low self-esteem do low self-esteem when it is matured in a man becomes the sponsor for an extravagant life becomes the sponsor for aggression and looking down on people becomes the sponsor uh, for downplaying people as a way of trying to show your relevance. So all that fight for titles. All that fight for recognition. All that impatience that drives people into living an extravagant life. Is primarily because of a deep-seated mentality of low self-esteem. Are we blessed? So a lady believes that until she plants a particular kind of hair. She can be beautiful and guys will not see her. Wherever she got that ideology. And then she finds out that the weave on is 15,000. And that becomes a goal. She's under pressure. Borrowing money. Trying to prove all kinds of things. And then when she buys it and puts it. She's hoping that now she has been able to attain a status quo. It's God speaking to us. So we have preachers with their clubs and societies. Right? That is based on something they believe they have to do to match up so a man of god thinks i can teach but i can't prophesy and his complex begins to sponsor him to look for prophetic grace anyhow are you getting my point even to the point of witchcraft and when he gets it he now believes that when that prophetic grace is added to me i will be like so 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 man of god are you seeing that now a poisonous mindset this is what is responsible for the hatred of brothers and sisters fathers and mothers a father will fight with his wife because the father believes that this woman is a ceo and i am an assistant director and his complex makes him feel do something to bring her down are we blessed now low self-esteem a mindset that stops people from moving and taking the path to success gradually low self-esteem has been the reason for incessant impatience especially in young people they want to buy the car now they want to marry now right they want sharp sharp money now sharp sharp success you want to start a ministry and in four months have a record breaking five thousand crowd low self-esteem to prove and you say, go and tell them in the village, God is at work here. You see that? Tell who? Them. That means there is a them you have been working for. There is somebody that you say, I must show this man that I am nothing. It's not enough reason. It's God helping us. Many of us have lost precious friends because of low self-esteem. Our low self-esteem makes us to interpret even a sincere compliment from a negative angle. Because you believe 
that you must do something to match up. Who is God speaking to tonight? We have all sorts of enemies and all sorts of people. I look at people who I know at the level I am now, I cannot even wear the clothes they are wearing and some of them are students. You know that God just blessed them and opened a small door for them. But that low self-esteem, especially ladies, sisters, say amen. Especially these ladies. You will see a tiny lady moving around. Self-esteem is pushing her and she goes to meet an un one big ungodly military officer. You know that she can destroy her life because she wants to say, I am going out with somebody in Jaji. Right? And that, oh, you think I don't know. You are joking. <laughs> Is God speaking to us? There are many preachers. They start preaching now. And they say, Kai, if I go, they won't, they, won't, they won't know that. They won't acknowledge me. So let me start going on air. And the grace to go on air has not been released. So the resources to back it up is not there. And they keep yoking their members week after week. There are business people who start a business now. And they say they want to do international business. They go and die in Italy. Or go and die in Brazil. Right? Low self-esteem. Being a motivation for many things. That's why you see preachers. Come, please. Look at men of God, for instance. When another man of God is about to see one, everybody is standing to see who will greet who. As a proof. Right? Meaning that the one who greets one is accepted. You see, we carry our villages, we carry our pain, we carry our backgrounds, mix it with the anointing, mix it with ministry, and off we go misleading many people. Bless you. So he comes to me, and then I cannot greet him. There are geos who will never turn and greet their people, and just say, God bless you, how are you? No. Because if, how can I greet him? You, greet my boy. You see that? Your village is haunting you. Your background is haunting you. A poisonous mindset haunting you. Don't just laugh. I'm, I'm serious, very serious as I speak here. There are ladies who believe they have to behave in a certain way to show they are not cheap. If, I, if you talk softly to guys, they will joke with you. Give it to them and they will respect you. That's your mentality. So God brought your husband ten times. And you drove him ten times. Because something in your mind. You live around the mediocres just like you in the room. And all of them convince themselves. It's amazing how we mess up and people clap for us. You do something very stupid that demands flogging. And you go and meet people who think like you. And they say, guy, guy you represented us. Look, let me tell you, let me tell you, listen, listen. You can decide to make up your mind and change or live in that false sense of success. There are some of us moving around, lying to people. Oh, we are millionaires. We are this and that and that. We are this and that and that. You carry your friend's car. You say it's, it's your car. You, you find that? All of those things. Some of us are sitting right now. Aside from maybe you just beg somebody. The clothes you are wearing is not your own. The watch you are wearing is not your own. The shoe you are wearing is not your own. The phone you are using is not your own. You borrowed your friend's phone for three days. What for? What's the point? What are you proving? An Android device? Shame on you. If that becomes the whole circumference upon which your life revolves in. That mankind, we make ourselves too cheap. And so we do not celebrate what we are and where we are. We do not celebrate what God is doing in our lives. We rush levels. We are not thorough in the dealings of God in our lives. And we end up with casualties. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. That mindset of inferiority right now is what has made some people not to relate with certain friends that can help them. Because you think this person is a villager. My, if, I, if I react like that, no, 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 no. There are some of us, if somebody looks at you in the secret place and speaks his language, not just to mock you, but just a nice conversation, let's connect. You say, please don't embarrass me here. Please, I've told people my, my, I'm half cast. My father is from where and where. Don't come and, 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 and fall my hand here.
Hallelujah. I once was talking to a preacher and he looked at me and I said, do I know how much his, his suit is that he was wearing? And I was shocked. In the middle of a destiny molding conversation, you stop me and ask me how much your suit is what? What in the world is that? I just, the anointing just lifted. I just knew that there's nothing to tell this person. Say in the name of Jesus, I am proud of my level. I will rise gradually. There's no point trying to fake success. I will pay the price and be successful. Hallelujah. Very important. Low self-esteem. Many of us here are suffering from it. It's what is responsible for gossip. It's what is responsible for backbiting. That spirit, that feeling of low self-esteem is the attitude that will sponsor your not celebrating the success of others. So the moment Mary says, I just bought a jeep. Say, Mary, what a jeep. Where did she get the money from? Mary, Mary that I know. Something is fishy. I must find out. Find out what? And you see, when you are determined to find out things, you will always find something. Is that true? Low self-esteem. Number two. Is the mindset that leads to what I call an uncultured use of words. Uncultured use of words. Psalms 141 verse 3. An uncultured use of words. God is helping us tonight. An uncultured use of words. Psalm 141 verse what? Psalm 141 verse 3. Everyone read. One to read. He said, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Look at me. There are many of us right now where you are seated. The devil of your destiny. That which has chained you and made nonsense out of your life. Is this gate called your lips. Hallelujah. The gate of uncultured words. Many of us have killed the dreams of people because we spoke something to them. Many of us have destroyed the destinies of people because we spoke words. Many of us have torn friends apart because of an uncultured word. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know that these decoration people, there's a way they behave? Uncultured words. Many of us have had witchcraft attack because our mouth introduced us to things we should keep. Ah, do you know, see that lady, that fine one, the other one, that very fine one, that's my wife. In fact, I'm even planning, I think I should get to Germany, hopefully. There's one morning I'm waiting and while you are talking, the elder is nodding. Say, where did you even say you are going again? Say, Germany. Everything has been working. All of a sudden, everything scatters. Our mouth. There are many of us, you plan to buy a car in 10 years. You have, I'm not saying confession of faith. Telling people, look, in fact, right now, the last time we went to Cotonou, and it's a lie. Pressure to say things that should not be. Set a watch. Put a gate, oh God, in my mouth that I will know when to speak. Nobody mocked you because they did not know you were barren. You carried your mouth, running it around, telling people and saying, don't tell anybody. For what? Say, don't, I don't know you, or don't tell anybody. It's me that said, Benga's wife, this and that and that happened. How we have put ourselves in trouble because we cannot shut our mouths. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was you that revealed to an armed robber that 10 million came into your father's account. They came, broke his head, broke your house, broke everything, broke the safe, removed the money. And he said, Kai, this world is a wicked world. Set a guard over my mouth. Let me tell you, you must learn to know when to speak 
and when to keep quiet. Many of you have made fools out of yourself because your father came and met you and said, I'm leaving your mother. And instead of you to be matured, you say, leave her, Jared. She's a wicked woman. Only for you to hear her own side. And she said, there's something I've not told you. Your father has been cheating on me from the day you were born. I've been enduring. And then you stand stupefied because you have backed your father and ran your mouth against your mother. Are you getting what I'm saying? The height of mental maturity in terms of communication is when you know when to speak and when to keep quiet. When to speak and when to keep quiet. Some of you people come to you for counseling and say, I've been fornicating or I've been suffering from masturbation. I've been doing immediately. You feel you say, ah, God is changing life. So say, what happens? Say, Man, the rate at which masturbation is disturbing people. I can't, ah, ah some brothers that you don't even expect you see that keep a watch oh God over my mouth keep a watch a guy came and met you and said look oh um, I'm, 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 we are going to get married let me just calm down I'm trusting God for some finances to come before you know it you have sent text to 11 ladies you chief bridesmaid you this and then later the guy will say I'm not doing and the friend say how far are we married say, hey, God is working and you are under pressure because you've run your mouth saying what you should not say the Bible says, a word spoken in due season. There is a due season for communication. Is God helping us? Mindsets. 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 Many of our parents go and run their mouths in the villages. Oh, I've been promoted. I'm a millionaire now. In fact, the last check entered and they said, there's one village project. Please, we're allocating the task of five million naira to you. And you see that the children are crying and suffering. And the man is building a community somewhere. Because your mouth, your mouth destroyed you. One time one lady came and met me. She thought it was good news. Very respectable um, man of God that she was going out with. And I think one time, I don't know. Let me assume the guy was carried away. And he wanted to make advances on her. And do a lot of things. And you know, she advised him. And at the end, he felt bad. He said, look. I don't know what came over me. Let's pray this and that. And then she came to talk to me. And she, she thought it was going to be a good news. She says, sir, honestly, I need to tell you something. It's not every man of God that is a man of God. I knew where she was going to. I listened to her. Uh, there are some things you don't come to me for. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then she came and met me. That ah, this and that and that. This person did this. Can I imagine? that this person did this she was so disappointed she still been disappointed she still did this and i said shame on you one because you were was it not in a room was it outside it happened you went to the room you were also tempted you will not accept that part of your role the role you played in seducing him you are you saying you did not see the advancement coming you were enjoying the attention until it got to the limit where you think you can take it is that not how it happens it was holding you, doing all kinds of things. You were enjoying it. When you felt it would now cross the boundary, what you call boundary, you now started talking and you are coming to report him rather than praying and humble yourself. I'm not justifying immorality. I'm talking about the foolishness of unguarded, uncultured communication. And the way she was talking to me, I know she has told more than hundreds of people right there. And you, you, you destroy. Now, listen. We are very disciplined people by the grace of God in this ministry. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it, many people have run down the churches and the ministry of others because of certain things. Especially this immorality thing. People come for counseling and they talk. They say all kinds of things. They say you are the... I, I remember one lady who met me and said, um, you are the only man of God in a long time who has talked to me without sleeping with me. I said, it's a sign that you need deliverance. While you are concentrating and saying people are doing this, there is a wicked spirit at work in you that is destroying people. Rather than thinking you are so seductive, you better find out that the hand of God needs to come upon your life to change it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Unguarded communications. Unguarded communications. Matters that don't concern you. It's amazing. You hear people talking about their father, talking about their mother, talking about their sister. A lady met me and said, ah, that uh, 
her sister just got married though sharp sharp she's now pregnant i say shut your mouth you are you, you can imagine the stupidity of your communication look at what drives your mind look i'm teaching you this because it will save you trouble are you hearing what i'm saying many of you are hated by people right now because you have joined the heads of too many people including your destiny helpers every time they mention your name to live to people say may god forbid i rather die than to give this person a job this person is a destroyer of destiny have you seen people like that you come in between two people who are in a relationship and you say my brother i'm a christian oh uh, i won't hide this thing from you there's something i want to tell you about this lady i saw the way you are blind flower and blind buying flower and all of these things all these things you are doing what is this lady has been rocking her life since she was 13. you are just coming innocently you don't know you you think she's a nice lady and the guy said eh. well i'm not saying she has hiv but who knows if there's something go for test mount some of us listen mindsets listen to me it's not just to say we want to be successful. Are you getting what I'm saying? I remember when Benny Hinn had his scandal, for instance. Many people in the body of Christ did not stay to find out what happened. Everybody started moving, running down Benny Hinn. The following Sunday, many pastors were preaching. When they said they caught him with Paula White. Right now, the Creflo Dollar, you see it on, on news. The Creflo Dollar asked his congregation, to buy him 65 million naira jet. That's not true. That's not what happened. Are you seeing that now? Everybody, those who have been angry. There are people angry today that Kenneth Copeland is flying his jet. There are people angry at all kinds of, of, of things. And we run our mouth. We say all kinds of things. People have called their mothers witches. Called their fathers witches. Listen. Give yourself a warning and discipline your mouth. And say, Lord, keep my mouth shut when it needs to be shut. And to speak when it needs to speak. Hallelujah. Unguarded communications. They tell a man of God, lead offering. And he comes and says, uh, as I was leading the offering, the Lord said this. Stand up. To mean that he wants to show that he's a man of God. And you spend one hour just for offering unguarded use of your mouth you just disgrace yourself and threw yourself in ashes are we growing tonight some of these issues look little but this is what makes leaders out of people notice that leaders are calm people they are people who evaluate things they are people who look into things because one day somebody is going to say something about your life your ministry your business something is that true i remember when one woman i think somebody met me and said one woman was saying this koinonia we emphasize the holy spirit not jesus he said that's witchcraft that's signs of the end time and the person was hoping that i would respond to it and i just kept quiet i said glory be to jesus and that was the end of it because sometimes I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus that may you not run your mouth in the presence of your enemy and give him the key to destroy your life. From the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks and then it ruins your life and then you close doors of destiny over your life. Many things have been shot in our lives because of these mindsets. There are many others, but I decided to pick two to talk about. Still, the mental transformation. That God will raise people in this place who are leaders indeed. Somebody comes to gossip to you, and immediately he finishes the gossip in about tossing. You tell the person, let's hold hands and pray for her. And the person is tongue and embarrassed and doesn't know what to do. Tomorrow they mark you as a real Christian. Do you know why many preachers' messages are not strong on the pulpit? They know you outside of pulpit. They know your life of gossiping and backbiting. They know your insincerity in handling the things of the kingdom. And so when you say God will bless you, the words are little. They don't carry you. May God give you the gift of a friend that has discipline with words. May God give you the gift of a friend that will use his words to bless you. 
you may not understand the implication of what I'm teaching you. Well, I don't want us to just say, Lord, send the rain. I'm teaching you practical issues that will make you exceptional. People will look at your life and your ideologies will be compelling. And people will come and say, why, what is, what is the framework of your mind? And you will let them know that the Lord Jesus Christ has transformed your life. You will see jobs you did not apply for come to you only because you, of your calmness. Everything is not just about your certificate. You will find out when you finish that it takes more than certificate to reign. It's God speaking to us. Preachers, God cannot trust you with innocent people because you cannot hear their cases and keep quiet. God cannot trust you with, with all kinds of people. There are pastors, God cannot trust them with large members because the day you know that one member is a billionaire, that day, Everybody in the church will know that this guy is a billionaire and they will strangle him. Everybody will come and say, we are soliciting for financial support and run him down because he gave you tithe of his billion. There are people in this place seated who are dangerously prosperous. Don't think everybody is struggling. There are people seated quietly here. I know them. There are people here who are dangerously anointed. Grace of God. There are people here whose parents, if you know the status, the societal status of their parents, you won't even go and knock their office. Yet they are calm and quiet. The day I found out that one of our ladies here was the daughter of one prominent man, I was shocked. I was shocked at the humility and simplicity of that lady. The day I found out that this big man, this is the daughter, I said, my goodness, what humility. There are some of us. Your, your father was giving caretaker or something of a local government and, and you wouldn't let anybody rest. I know that I'm hard on us tonight, but it's because I love you. I want to make leaders out of us. Not just men who are tongue talkers, but people who have the wisdom for living. Are you getting what I'm saying? Never sit down and entertain gossip. Be the one to drive that atmosphere away so that God will come and bless you. Never be the one. Let it not be your room that when they want to run down people, your room is the place where they meet. Say, let's meet at, at uh, that usual joint. And when you come, say, hey, before they reach, say, sit down first. Let me be serving you minerals as you do it. No. Let your room be the place where when you talk of destiny, when someone's life is down, he says, I know that I will go to Sam's house because if I can find my way there, I will find God. I will find hope. My neighbor has one friend that I told her in my, she may be here listening to me. In my opinion, that is one of the nicest women I have met in my life and the most sincere woman that my neighbor's friend i've seen my neighbor two times when you know our regular human activities challenges she shared her testimony here and that woman will come to her and kneel down and pray and cry she will come and see my neighbor washing and come immediately and collect the clothes and wash for her I, there was a time she came there was nobody you know, sometimes I lock my door and you wouldn't know I'm around. She came in and there was nobody. Do you know what she did? She laid her hands on my neighbor's door and started weeping and said, Lord, will you open the door for my friend and bless my friend? She didn't know I was listening. Hi. I said, oh God, will you give our people in Koinonia wives like this? How many of you can be that true that you use your words well only to bless. Will you make up your mind that beginning from today, I will set a guard over my mouth. My mouth will not be the reason why I will destroy the life of another. Anything that proceeds from my mouth will only be that which carries blessings. In Israel, if you curse somebody, they will kill you because they understand the implication of words. Is God speaking to us tonight? Many of us have made ourselves cheap. When you started out, people respected you because you were a man of few words. Right now, you have become a talkative. And gradually, you see that your respect has been going down. 
Have you seen people like that? One moment they are rest. In fact, when they come, they say, sir, good afternoon. At the end of the conversation, the woman says, okay, my son, I've heard about you. Whereas when you came, she said, kind man of God, I, I covet the grace upon your life, but you threw away your honor. Everybody write this word down, honor. Honor. These are the principles that bring honor to your life. Value honor more than money. Value honor more than reputation. Money cannot give you honor, but honor will give you blessings. Honor. The ability to recognize and reward your difference is what we call honor. Uncommon principles that will make you exceptional. Tonight's teaching may look simple, but it is indeed powerful. As a man thinketh, your mindset. I'm doing a re-engineering in our mind. A recalibration. Changing our perceptions from our various cultural standpoints and connecting us to the attitude of the kingdom. That which make kings. That which make nobles. That which makes men wise. That which opens cheap doors for greatness. Two more things and we are going to pray. How do I engage? I've said it, but then I will say it again and again. How do I engage in renewing my mind when I find out that there is something flawed in my life? How do I start? Now I've found out that I have a poisonous communication. Now I've found out that I'm a bitter and envious person. I found out that I'm a jealous person. Negative dimension of jealousy. I found out that I'm suffering a lot of complex. I found out that I'm suffering failure and defeat. How do I begin to rise? Number one, you must admit and accept that you desire that there, there is a need for transformation in that area of your life. Transformation will never come till you are humble enough to accept. There are some of us here, God has been blessing us with all kinds of financial blessings. But something about our mindset keep throwing money out of our lives. Favor brings money to your life. Wisdom throws it out of your life. There are many of us who ministerial doors open up to us, but the people never call us back because there is something about our mindset. You go to preach in a church. You don't study the way the church setting is. You just stand and run your mouth and say anything, anyhow to anybody. You go to a church that is predominantly elders. Your packaging and communication must suit the context of your audience. You go to a church that is filled with intellectuals. I've preached in all kinds of churches. And they like me. I've preached in all kinds of places. Because I pay the price to understand the people I'm communicating to. It's God speaking to us. So God opened the door of ministry. You now went to preach. You were preaching in, in, a, in a military cantonment. And you were speaking as if you were talking to market women. Because you did not know how to communicate aright. And they said, please, don't bring this man again. This man came to embarrass us. Our Oga was here. We thought God would glorify himself. God glorified himself. But this man, Kai, don't bring him again. And the door closes. And you see a man, six months, they've not called you to bless anybody. Not because you are not anointed. You have the anointing. But these mental adjustments. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of us, somebody comes to your life. And the mindset of courtesy and greeting the person. You just come and say, I am apostle, so, 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 and so. This and that and that. There was a young man that was standing. Well, while I returned from the trip, I was, I just ran to quickly refresh and come. And the young man just stood there. And I was asking the protocol, why is this guy here? He said he came for prayer. I said, by this time, this is Koinonia. I can't see you now. He said, I've been coming and every time I come, I find out that your door is locked. So I decided to come now and stay. You see that? On a very good day, I would have said, so it's like nobody has introduced me to you, Abi. Protocol, can you let him know the kind of no, 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 no. Yes, he did what was wrong, but at least solve the problem at that point since he's there and bless him and then show him the right way to do it. That guy now will live loving me more, but he can live hating me and say, This person, he's going right there to go and preach, but this is a soul dying. 
So is your genuine test for souls true? Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Little foxes, brothers and sisters, spoil the vine little adjustments that we need to make to our lives to make us exceptional many of us are anointed no doubt but many of us cannot reign because the wisdom that makes for dominion the wisdom that makes men exceptional the wisdom that makes people extraordinary is deficient in our lives that mental adjustment one more time lay your hands on your head and say Lord Jesus I make up my mind to make the required adjustments for my greatness. I make up my mind to contend for change and contend for adjustment. I make up my mind to lay aside the old and to pick up the new. Hallelujah. I told you two more things. Write it down very quickly. Number one, Two more things I'm adding to what I've said that will make you exceptional. The attitude of courtesy. Courtesy. You know what we call courtesy? Decorum. Respect for people. That attitude that gives honor and courtesy and respect. Another word you can put is respect. The mindset where you hold people in high esteem is an adjustment that will make the rain fall in your life. It will make you a magnet. By and large, after preaching, there are things you do that makes you lovable. It makes you inviting. Look at me. Come, Sam. If Sam comes and finishes preaching, watch this. And then I come up as a man of God and I just collect the mic from him. And I say, Sam, that's nice. My boys are really growing. You see that? Watch this. Am I anointed? Yes. Do I love God? Do I love souls? Do you think my relationship with Sam will be sustainable? No. Because I simply violated his self-worth to prove a point. There's no attitude of respect and courtesy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you are higher or lower than that person, that attitude of honor and courtesy. And I pick up the mic, Sam, God bless you. Everybody, let's celebrate the hand of God upon Sam. Sam, thank you. You are a great blessing. I honor you. Thank you so much. You see that? Courtesy. At once, Sam will love me and Sam will reward me by increasing my self-worth and my honor in his mind. See, this is what makes some leaders, although they are silent, the reverence that people give to them is almost like, like human worship. There is something they are doing. They have transferred honor to their subordinates and they are receiving the harvest of that honor back. Are you learning something? Never you sub your subordinates to prove that you are mighty. You are a fool if you do that. Transfer honor to them. Some of them will be rebellious, but it's a law that cannot be broken. The honor will return to you a hundredfold. Is God speaking to us? The mentality of courtesy. Ladies, one act of courtesy can open your marital destiny. You have fasted for 40 days, but your attitude, no courtesy. You give a gentleman something, you cannot even give him with, 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 with courtesy. Help me with that handkerchief. Eh, take, hello, what are you even saying again? Take. And whereas this guy has been looking from afar. Oh Lord, do I go or do I not go? And immediately he sees that nonsense. He plots the graph and says, no, this is not what God showed me. And he turns back. Are you anointed? Yes. Do you pray in tongues? Yes. But it has stopped the door of marriage. Am I speaking to us? Some of us, our attitude of being rude, rude to people, courtesy. I make it as a point of duty. I make it as a point of duty as much as possible. Even when I am rebuking people, they know that in that rebuke, I love them. 
I sent a text to the leaders, I think it was yesterday or today, appreciating all of them for handling the ministry activities and doing everything in my absence. I'm still going to tell them again during the, our leaders meeting because I love them. I honor the leaders in this ministry. I respect the grace of God upon their life and I, I thank God for the grace and the opportunity and the privilege of working with them. That is the reason why no matter what happens when you come outside, you must find some chairs. I rebuke the protocol most times when I come and see people standing. Why? Because of honor. I honor the fact that you left your house and came here. Are you seeing that you are not just coming to, to Koinonia because I'm anointed? There is an atmosphere that unconsciously honors you. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are churches you go and you are treated like a piece of rag. The only person who deserves to be honored is the man of God. And members say, I can't stay here. Is the man warded? Yes. Is he anointed? Yes. But he does not understand the organizational principles of sustaining success. Please learn it. Courtesy. Learn to be cautious. Learn to treat people with honor and respect. Greet people. Greet people. Don't say this person, when I was in SS3, was please leave all those things. Greet people. Oh, Benga, how are you? Um, Abiodu, how are you? When I came in, I saw Jake's. I gave him a nice hug. And I just come and say, I'm, no, 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 no. Say, I receive grace to honor men. Say, I receive grace to show courtesy. If somebody offends you, handle the situation in wisdom. Don't just hit things in a way that you scatter the opportunities of tomorrow because you are trying to respond to the pain of today. There are roommates who cannot talk to themselves again because of that mutual respect of honor. And you, when people honor you, reciprocate it back. You become foolish when you are only receiving and not giving. If Tosin looks at me now and says, ah, says something that I like, I will find something to reciprocate. And so you become a friend of everybody. When people are suffering from complex, they run to you because you have an atmosphere that says you are welcome. You have an atmosphere. When I finish Koinonia here, I've been, I've been tired since morning. But I have to stand here to at least the people are joining a line that is already embarrassing for me because I know some of the people standing in that line it's not like there are some helpless people but they humble themselves and they stand and to be able to do that I give them a hug I talk to them with courtesy all our little children that come to hug me here I honor them that's why immediately after service they come around you the little children sit near you as they are sharing the grace they are running away from you something about your life is driving them that's how a business partner will look at you and say you don't have the skill for business but there is an attitude there's something about you I want to do business with you there is a business of hundreds of millions that I want to do with you and you step into favor favor that you will never recover from there are doors of ministry that have been opened to me today that I know should never have been opened but because I honored my way to them I treated people with courtesy and I didn't know when I met them again and they were the ones who advocated that I be blessed is God speaking to us? The last thing I want to talk about is the mentality of endurance. Endurance. Help us, Holy Spirit. Just give me five minutes and we'll pray. Everybody say endurance. Say it, endurance. The Bible puts it this way. He that endures to the end. Everybody say endure to the end. Many people will never taste of the fruit of true success because we gas out. We do not have the staying power. Listen, listen, listen. That's why the ministry of prayer is inevitable if you want to finish strong. Endurance. Endurance. In your journey to greatness, you will endure. You will endure hardship. You will endure misunderstanding. 
you will endure misinterpretation you will endure a lot you will make sacrifices you will endure hunger but he that endures let me tell you when you see a blessed man respect him don't ever see any man either in the corporate world or in the ministry that is truly lifted and trivialize what God has done never want my crown until you see the scars on my hand every crown has a scar on the hand are you are you are you getting this i'm rounding up i'm speaking to you that illusion that greatness will just happen to you is a dream wake up that illusion that somebody will become successful and then you enter his success just like that I'm telling you it's a dream wake up so while you are there running people down realize that if you must be great your own curriculum of endurance is waiting for you no matter how you are there are people today who misunderstand koinonia there are people today who misinterpret what we are doing we have been persecuted in our respect don't you think it's everybody that loves joshua selman there are people when you call joshua selman it's as if you call the lord jesus there are people if you call joshua selman it's as if you call the devil and the antichrist all together is what builds dexterity for ministry i remember when the protocol started responding to calls and the rest i received a lot of backlashes from people are you trying to say you are too busy now you cannot respond to us why should protocol be endurance but right now it has proven to be an excellent system endurance are you willing to endure many of us do not want to be talked bad about sorry for you as far as success is concerned let me tell you it's a cross that every great man must carry are you hearing what I'm saying? You want anointing, but you don't want the persecution that comes with it. You are dreaming. Oh, they will talk against you. They will say, how are we sure that anointing is genuine? How are we sure the miracles are real? How are we sure? This one that have not been around now for two weeks. <laughs> Somebody can say, I knew it. Maybe he went to collect power. <laughs> he went to collect power for the next level. listen listen never be under pressure to prove your innocence there is a law you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth be comforted by the immutability of kingdom laws and do not be under pressure to prove any point if somebody meets somebody and say benga i'm suspecting that he has been sleeping with prayer band ladies don't try me me god knows we, no 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 no. you can do nothing against the truth the truth was buried after three days it resurrected you can't hide truth for long no sir no sir keep your sacrifice endure i'm giving you a mindset realize that success does not come on a platter of gold the favor of god does not take away the need for endurance you will endure hardship are you getting what i'm saying you will endure hardship to be prosperous financially you will make sacrifices you will make mistakes you will learn a lot to grow in ministry you will have to learn a lot of lessons through pain sweat and blood i know my message is not attractive but this is what will make you uncommon endurance endurance endure hardship as a faithful soldier of christ you went to win souls nothing happened you went for that meeting you thought the power of god would move nothing happened and you seem to live in shame don't worry keep fasting keep praying i know you went and it looked like they dread you you went to sing and you lost your key you lost your voice you embarrassed don't worry let them keep laughing don't be under pressure to prove anything and say no is i can sing oh what happened that day is i had kata forget about all those explanations kata or no kata continue a day will come you will be noted for persistence and your critics will become the advocates of your lifting when you endure if you give up you make the prophecy of your critics true. You make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. 
God is speaking to someone. We are rounding up. That all you need is to keep doing what you are doing. I know they are talking about you at home. Your prayer life has brought a lot of persecution, but endure. Keep praying. Sister, they've told you you will marry the Holy Spirit. No problem. Keep praying. They've called you Mother Mary, and now you are ashamed. You cannot even hold your Bible again. Endure. Listen, it's an irrefutable law of greatness. An irrefutable law. I thank God today for the sacrifices of endurance. I thank God for the times when I did not give up in my life. Today, it has translated to the salvation of millions. The transformation of lives. Seated here right now listening to me are people who need to endure. I know you have been taught that if it is of God, it must come cheap and easy. No, sir. There is a system in the kingdom where men pass through the cross to get the crown. This is a very deep teaching. You must endure. We are going to pray. Oh, I will endure. No matter what it will take, I will endure. As you are sitting down right now, there may not be one naira in your pocket, but endure. Keep tightening. Some of you, aside from boss, you may trek home and deal. Some of you, you go and receive as old as you are, you still receive all kinds of beating from your elderly ones and deal. And you see the hand of God upon your life. And deal. Who is God speaking to? Mm. Some of you are spilling over and it looks bad. But God is speaking to you tonight and deal. Don't worry. It looks like one year is a long time. Two years is a long time. But don't worry. Like the twinkling of an eye, you will come out. But as you are coming out, you will not just come out a graduate. What would take your colleagues 10 years you have learned? So one giant leap in destiny you will cover up. But for now, endure. 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 You don't have suit to wear. Don't be under pressure to do anything. Endure. Is God speaking to us? I choose to endure. This is how this ministry came. To see what God is doing today. And to see where he brought us. And to see where he's taking us. Endurance. Endure the mockery. Endure the shame. Never be under pressure to prove yourself. At every given point in your life. Those who love you outweigh those who hate you. Don't because of the five or six people that hate you. You throw away the honor of millions of people in your life. If 30 people hate Sam, 2 million people love him. Respect their love and don't turn to 10 or 16 people and try to be under the pressure of defending yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At every point in your life, those who are for you are greater than those who are against you. Say after me, I have the spirit of a winner. Say it. Say I have a determination of a winner. Say in the name of Jesus, I will weary failure until I succeed. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I will weary failure until I succeed. I remember one of our great ones, Mazi Prosper, his, his wedding in I think a week or two from now and he returned from the states and came to my place and he was thanking me we were talking i met mazi prosper in 2004 when he started his comedy the truth is he wasn't very funny when he started all those things sometimes you just laugh it's more of his face that makes you laugh than the joke are we together now and so i said kai this guy but i encouraged him there were times when he would send me a text and say, ah, what happened? Somebody promised him that they would give him a show and then they would later push him back for another person and he should continue. I told him, keep on. Keep improving yourself. See, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, it's okay for people to laugh at you. It's not unusual. Let them laugh because they'll be the ones to defend you tomorrow. They can't say you jumped the process because they'll say, I laughed at him. Even me, I thought he would fail. Let them laugh at you. 
are we together they saw when you started the business they saw when you started the saloon they saw when they came and locked the shop because you could not pay rent they even helped you to pack your things out of the shop with the embarrassment continue in the midst of that tears go back and study find out who is the best hairstylist what are their secrets labor and pay the price to get knowledge when you have the leading saloon in any place people will say i said i said it even those who criticize you i knew you would be successful oh brothers and sisters it's great to conquer challenges the other side of pain is sweet i tell you this from experience the other side of pain is delightsome a woman carries pregnancy spitting all around looking as if she would die but when the child comes people come to visit her and they bring gifts and she looks at a new baby and she's blessed learn this the other side of pain is glory unlimited If you think it's costly to be successful let's consider the alternative are you ready to consider the alternative failure all the way pain all the way broken down and spread through your lifetime it's better for me to take 10 years of my life and pay the price and live the remaining part of my life making a mark for the kingdom than living in denial and living in fear and living in lies for 70 years of my life and in my old age i find out that the prophecy of those who hate me have become self-fulfilling be determined go for knowledge unembarrassingly go for knowledge see seeking wisdom will sting your ego settle it before the time someone came today and met me with a proposal the first time he sent me a text for the proposal, I didn't even reply him. I just left him. Not intentionally, really. Probably I didn't pay attention to what he was saying. And then he sent it again. And then he sent it again. We returned back from a trip yesterday. He sent another text for me. And then I was talking to a few people this morning. And then he called me. And I said, this guy is serious. I told him, come. When he came, I wasn't concerned about the proposal. I collected it. Look at what he had to it was something about his company he needed advice and i dropped it and i said you are a smart person let me add value to you and i told him sit down i began to share with him a few things i've learned and he was amazed i gave him a few videos i said this will help you i would never do this to anybody by default even my blood brother if you don't seek it you will never get it please stop trying to help people who do not want your help they will trample on your help I've learned this. Learn it. Never try to help people who are not prepared for it. They will not appreciate it. If you are not thirsty and I bring water, you can carry it and stone it back at me. Are we together? Thank you, Jesus. So pursue knowledge. And number three, live by the truths. Live by the truths. Please. How many people don't tight? I tell you, I can almost tell you that more than half of the people here are not consistent with tithing. Don't blame God for closed heavens. I can tell you this. I can look at your life and unashamedly tell you the areas where you are not living by the word of God. It's not a lie. I'm being sincere with us. Is that all right? So that we don't come and lie and fall under the anointing and sweep the ground and get up and go back. We are not living by the word. God is my witness. Ask those who are close to me. Everything God blesses me with before I think of anything, the tithe, God's portion is out. I don't practice it. I live by it. It's a law. There's no man who jumps up and continues going up. You must come down. It's a law. Are we together now? Why will you keep punishing yourself by fighting the laws that are older than your existence? Why fight the laws of God? Why not come into alignment? I have learned the excellency. I found myself many times violating the laws of the kingdom and my goodness the experiences have been nasty 
align yourself with the laws of the kingdom and you will find freedom true freedom they know not the bible says neither will they understand it says they grow up in darkness and the whole earth is out of course wisdom it is wisdom that brought many of us here are we together listen when saul lost his father's when his father's donkey was missing saul and one other person and the servant they were on their way to look for it they tried looking for it by themselves and they had to acknowledge and say look every knowledge we know as far as recovery is concerned we have exhausted it he said see let us take another alternative that's what brought many of us here there are many people who will not humble themselves to say see i have tried this situation i don't know whether it's demonic or is my own but at least let me go to an atmosphere where i can find explanation if you do this you are wise are we together if you do this you are wise and they said there is a man of god let's go and meet him even if we are wrong let us find somebody who can tell us we are wrong notice everybody who met a man of god to solve their problem the man did more than what they, are, they came for he trivialized their problem look at naman his breakthrough was only seven baths away yet he lived his lifetime suffering i have learned by experience that breakthrough is not difficult it is access to the platform for the breakthrough that is hard but the day you find a place of breakthrough brothers and sisters in 24 hours your captivity of decades can come to an end. The price is not to get breakthrough. The price is to go to the atmosphere where breakthrough is a possibility. That's your price. Is God speaking to us? They went to Samuel. The major issue was the issue of restoration. But when they went to Samuel, listen all that samuel told them was is it not the donkey is being found please there are more important issues can you imagine to them that was the big deal let's look for our father's donkey but samuel said leave the issue of donkey i speak or yeah he's being found look at naman when naman went to go and meet elisha what did he say go and bath it even come out just go and take your bath seven times ah, he went to take his bath and that was the end of it Brothers and sisters, tonight, many of you are face to face with realities that can wipe your tears of decades. But it is for you to recognize. Your own part has been done by coming to the atmosphere. Now step back and allow God to step in. You see that? Your own part. There are few prophets that I've met in my life, true prophets. One day I met a man of God, a true prophet of God. And I was explaining a few things to him, areas of confusion here in my life. Do you know that before I would talk to this man, he looked at me and smiled. He said, did God not show you what you are going through now? Ah. And I just looked at the man. He said, you are pretending as if God did not show you. But did he not show you the other side too? See that? Yeah. Go and take the yellow book among your books. Read it now. Page 70. That's where God gave you the prophetic word. That's, he said, please, this issue is not the issue we are discussing. Let's discuss the next level of ministry. How is Koinonia doing? This is a prophet speaking to me. Ah. How about the dream you had of the next level? This is what we are discussing. I went for something else. I'm hearing something else. That's the character of a true man of God. Some of you now have carried the problem. My rent, oh God. And God is saying, not rent. I'm going to give you an anointing to start up a business. You came, for, how much is rent? 250. I know it's a mountain to you. But don't joke with God. Once you are in that atmosphere, expect him to do more. Expect him to do more. Hallelujah. There is one requirement from you tonight. That requirement is to accept that you need help that's the last thing i would require from you if you can accept before god and say lord 
I've tried everything I know to do. I know that this thing is not as hard as it is. But I submit myself to your wisdom. You have changed the lives of people within 24 hours. You have brought restoration and healing and hope for people. Brothers and sisters, that sickness can leave. That it has stayed 20 years does not mean that's how to stay. You can choose to hear this word from God and argue it and just say, well, nice preaching. Your problem only affects you. I hope you know. But you can tremble at his word and say, this is the key. One prayer that God will never reject is the cry of mercy from a man who needs his help. When a man comes to the end of his life, I have come to the end of myself. I have come to the end of myself. I have come to the end of myself. When you come to that point and you say, Lord, you spoke to me that I'm going to be a kingdom financier. I'm short of ideas. I've come to the end of my life. Lord, I need direction. I don't know whether it's job now or marriage. I don't know whether it's Zaria now or, or, or I'm going to London or I'm going to Calabar or I'm staying in, 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 in Kogi State. I need direction. You will never, never receive direction and help from God by default. Jesus Christ saw blind Bartimaeus. He passed him as if he didn't see him. Blind Bartimaeus said, Thou son of David! I'm sure people said, keep, keep, keep quiet. The guy cried the more. He said, wicked people, you have eyes. I'm, I'm, I'm blind. Tonight, you may be going through all kinds of things. Brothers and sisters, the power of God is available. You have taken the first right step to come to the atmosphere. The second step is surrender. You must receive his help because you can reject it. You can reject the help of God. Before we begin to pray, Papa Adeboye shared a story and talked about a man who was on a wheelchair. And that man was on a wheelchair. And people kept giving the man money. He became rich because every time people would give him money. And then one time during a program, Papa Deboe looked at him and he was moved with compassion by the Holy Spirit. And he was going to pray for him. And he, he was led to ask him, do you want to be well? The man said no. He looked at him, ha, ah, be well? Why should I stand up when my life has changed on this chain and truly the man told him all i want is money i don't want to be well i think eventually the guy got healed and he was angry that's according to papa deboe he said the guy was angry because he said now i'll have to work for myself no excuse again take over take over i have come to the end of myself Take over, take over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Say, Lord, I need help. Mention the areas you need his help. If you don't need any help, pray for Koinonia. Pray for the ministry. Lord, I need help. Pray. I need help in my marriage. Pray. I need help in my finances. 
I need help in my academics. I need help on my job. Are you praying? Thou son of David, I cry for your mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second prayer point. Lord, I know it is within your power to help me. I ask for your help. Let your power address my case tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I know. Oh, it is within your power to give me a husband. It is within your power to give me a wife. It is within your power to cause my business to flourish. It is within your power to bring restoration. It is within your power to give me a child. It is within your power to cure HIV. It is within your power to deliver me. Oh, pray. It will put a new song in your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer point. We are going to cry for grace. I just showed you your contribution to your failure. You must take responsibility and say, Lord, I take responsibility and I receive grace to make the adjustments. There's nothing embarrassing about it. From all that I've said, you know the area that affects you. Say, Lord, I take responsibility. The part you cannot do for yourself, you will do. But the part that is your responsibility, you must take responsibility. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, we take responsibility. In the name of Jesus, we receive fresh determination, fresh persistence, fresh determination, fresh persistence. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we receive the grace to pursue wisdom, to seek wisdom like a jewel. We receive grace to pursue understanding. We receive grace to live by the truths that we know. We receive grace to be convicted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shortly we are going to begin ministering. We'll be very fast today. I want to see how we can close on time. So we're going straight to the point. Hallelujah. We'll try to do everything very, very fast and see how we can beat time as much as possible. Hallelujah. You're going to prophesy what you want to happen to you by yourself. Are you ready now? Please. I want you to speak it. These are instructions from God. 
I know you have been praying in your secret place. It's not the same thing you are doing now. Open your mouth and prophesy everything God will do for you. Lift your voice and pray. I walk out of here healed tonight. Come on now. SS, you must leave me tonight. AS, you must leave me tonight. Shake a tata. Baka para toko topekete. Confusion must end in my life tonight. That idea that I need for my business. That idea that I need for promotion. That restoration. I refuse to walk out of this place without that restoration. That mantle. That renewed spiritual life. That clarity. That prophetic word. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Pray. Pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray that every spirit from darkness that has held your life, pray that you must be delivered this night. Every spirit tying your family, every spirit tying your progress, pray. Enough is enough. He must live my life. Lord, I must be delivered today. Hallelujah. 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 In recent time, I have seen tremendous increase of the anointing of the Spirit upon my life, especially in the area of healing and deliverance. I have seen this all my life, but I have seen a multiplication of this grace brothers and sisters whatever your challenge is believe me there is an enough anointing to wipe your tears if only you will believe don't be part of those who have come to waste their time there are people standing outside just staring at others forget about them and be focused you know what you are going through miracle service is not it's not a marriage ceremony it's not an album dedication. You don't come and just watch and smile. You come with anger in your heart and say, Lord, I, I won't go back that way. Who told you SS cannot be healed? Who told you AS cannot change? Who told you the, the biological problem cannot go? Who told you you cannot get breakthrough? Lord Jesus, we thank you. We release this atmosphere to you and your power. Lord, I know that you will do amazing things even in this place. We trust you for a quick walk. There are lives, there are destinies that need to be changed. Lord, there are people under all kinds of the influence of strange spirits that have tied their lives. Let not one of them escape the power of the Holy Spirit. There are sick bodies that need to be healed, oh God. Let not one of them escape the healing power of God. There are families that have come with burdens. Lord, I pray. Your people have come with prayer requests. Impossible situations. But they believe in you. So Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, while the ministration continues, please, if you have not written your prayer requests, make sure that you write them. It's important. It's not a religious formality. It's a revelation that God gave us. Hallelujah. During the dinner, those of us who are workers will have the opportunity probably to 
experience the testimonies that have come as a result of answered prayers. So in one minute, just write your prayer request very quickly so that when we start, please, if you are yet to write, let's just give them an opportunity. Please help one another with um, papers. You can feel free to put on your phone, contact your loved ones and tell them to send in their prayer request if it's possible. There are many who have sent their own hundreds online. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you write everything. Write everything you are trusting God to do in your life. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a very simple song. Lift your voice and sing it to your maker. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Aleluya. 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 Come, my dear. Yes. Yes, you come. I look at this lady and I see a spirit, a very serious spirit. Hold my hands. The Lord will deliver you huh? from that spirit. Because this is something that wants to destroy your life. Is your sister here? Where's her sister? Is her sister here? Is she here? I need to pray for both of you because I'm seeing an attack coming to your family. There is a spirit that I saw, and this is something that has to do with somebody dying. Hallelujah. Who is here? Where is she? Please, let's save time um, very quickly so that we can. We have to pray. I'm seeing death in your family. This is somebody's obituary God wants to avert. You can help her hold her baby if she won't cry. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. But you specifically, there is a spirit that torments you. I need to pray for you. Leading you into things that you do not want. Hearing a name Femi, not, not Pastor Femi, Femi. I'm hearing a name Femi. Femi, who is Femi? Please, if, if I call your case, please just save our time and come quickly. Femi. Your name is Femi? Who is a visitor? You are the one from where? Come. From where? Jigawa. Eh? Jigawa. From Jigawa State. Yes. You came from Jigawa State. Yes, sir. The Lord is going to set you on fire and yes, take sir. you back there. You didn't just come yes, sir. just for a meeting. I know you just yes, thought sir. you came to receive. I'll call you several times. Sir. Eh? I'll call your number several times. You not be you. <laughs> you will receive that which you desire. Praise the Lord. Amen. My brother, I'm going to pray for you. Victoria. Victoria. I hear a name, Victoria. Please, who is Victoria? Let me just respond. To Victoria. Victoria. There is a Victoria trusting God for a change of genotype. Genotype. You're trusting God for a change of genotype. I don't know if it has to do with um, S S A S. Anyone like that? This is a Victoria I see. I want to minister to a Victoria that is trusting God for a change of genotype. We have to frustrate come we have to frustrate the power stopping your marriage look at me we have to frustrate the power that is stopping your marriage huh because it's God's desire for you to settle down soonest you understand this is this is the devil is not going to lord it over you we are going to pray please I want you to believe I don't have to call your case I'm just flowing because the Holy Spirit is impressing it strongly upon me and then we'll just get into prayer Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, visit this family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is your mother? Who is sick? Who is sick in your family? My mom. Because I'm seeing that, ah, we have to pray. I have, we have to pray. Hmm? This is December. Your mother will just sleep and they will tell you, I'm not a prophet of doom. They will tell you that she's dead. She has been talking about death. We have to rebuke this thing. She has been seeing dead people in her dream. She sleeps and she sees dead people. 
and they will be stretching their hands towards her and asking her to hold them some of them are people who have died before see there are families here with those things but we are going to deal with it praise the lord father in the name of jesus christ i pray for this family that spirit of death over the family in the name of jesus we roll it away we roll it away by the power of the holy spirit and for you i curse this spirit that is in you in the name of jesus when the time for deliverance comes the lord is going to set you free completely in the name of jesus christ i want to pray for you your hands are blessed listen your hands are blessed god expects you to use your hands to bring wealth to yourself your hands are blessed the lord is saying i should tell you that these hands are blessed hands are you getting what i'm saying you have to pray and trust god for ideas the things that you can do with your hands and he will bless you in the name of the lord jesus christ new level come there is still a time for impartation so you receive it but two things god is giving you number one god is giving you wisdom number two god is giving you stability huh i see you but i see like a wind you are here and there god needs to give you stability father you will give him stability in the name of jesus come my dear i pray for you you will marry a foolish man say amen i curse every spirit delaying her marriage now in the name of jesus christ i rebuke that spirit come um, I have to pray for you hold my hands lord she must be free today today is her day of liberty in the name of jesus christ i rebuke this spirit you must leave her i see you in the spirit out of her right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ my dear do you love jesus very well huh Please, he wants you to take him very seriously. Okay? Where are you from, my dear? Benway State. Benway State. Is, who is here with you? My brother. Your brother. Where is he? Love. Brother, please, can you come? I want to speak to him just before we start. This What's his name? Joseph, huh? Joseph Okotu. Joseph, where are you? I hear the Lord saying he's bringing restoration to your family. That's why I want to pray for you. We are going to pray. The Lord is saying I should tell you he will give you beauty for ashes. Huh? You may not understand the meaning of what I'm saying. But as the days unfold you will see God honor you. Father let there be restoration for this family. You are going to be a great man of God. Great man of God. God is going to put a teaching anointing upon you. Supernatural grace for teaching. Supernatural grace for teaching. Father, step into this family and do miracles in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice in one minute. Let's begin to pray in tongues. Shiva Please rise up on your feet, everybody. Shabra Thank you, Father. Because the oppressed will be delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I want to begin to minister. Deliverance is very important. Very, very important. It's the platform that separates you from the spirits and the influences. You see, sometimes some of you do not even know that your lives are under um, certain levels of 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 bondage but then you will need the grace of God you will need the wisdom of God you will need his grace to give you direction and I'm going to pray for you right now my goodness the power of God is strong in this place so many people inside and outside it will surprise some of you because you do not even know now listen this deliverance is not just for individuals in fact God is going to start with families that's what I see God doing hallelujah praise the lord you've heard this happen again and again i don't know why god does this but a lady is going to shout under the anointing and this is what will introduce that grace 
a loud shout by the spirit of the living god lift your hands father thank you for your power and your presence in this place right now in the name of jesus at the count of three i want everyone to shout jesus from the depth of your heart i challenge every spirit i challenge every voice and every altar oh god that has kept your people bound that has kept families bound there's no place for escape for you tonight lord i pray that in a mighty way as your people begin to shout you visit them my goodness the power of god is already coming on people at the count of three one two get ready now get ready three fire upon you right now deliverance fire in the name of jesus receive it receive it help them please help those people right now in the name of jesus inside and outside i release the power of the holy spirit the power of the holy spirit right now right now right now right now right now i see the power of god along this region right here where the ministers are staying i see the power of god right now i cast that spirit i challenge every power every fraternity from hell that keeps people bound in the name of jesus hallelujah lift your hands those outside alone those inside you can relax those outside at the count of three i want you to shout jesus there are people who are tied to covenants i hear covenants in the spirit people tied to covenants as you shout that name it's like a wind that will blow outside and the power of god will begin to set people free are you ready now at the count of three one two three in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ we release deliverance outside we release mighty deliverance now lift your hands you don't have to shout just keep it lifted hallelujah i'm going to begin to speak and prophesy and for all those who are affected the power of god will begin to touch them bring them out here in the name of jesus lift your hands now i pray every family here under any spell every family lord where are they right now let the power of god touch them touch them now 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 right now in the congregation every family under any kind of spell i bring deliverance right now i bring deliverance right now in the mighty name of jesus i bring deliverance help that lady i bring deliverance right now right now keep your hands lifted right now father identify families that have suffered every cause right now in the name of jesus all over the congregation inside and outside hallelujah keep your hands lifted no instruments just keep your hands lifted i'm going to pray i see fire rolling in the realm of the spirit now that fire listen that fire is going to come upon individuals i'm hearing stagnation that's what i'm hearing please keep your hands lifted inside and outside lord wherever those people are get set right now as i speak the fire will burst and begin to touch people stagnation wherever they are shake it, 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 it. begin to touch them right now by that fire receive it right now right now right now right now right now all over the building in the name of jesus christ that spirit of stagnation that has been responsible i see some people being touched outside i see people being touched outside hallelujah 
This row, lift your hands. Just this row. Lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands towards you. The moment I stretch my hands, the power of God will move in dramatic ways. And I'm hearing in my spirit breakthrough. That's what is coming. Please make sure you believe. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. It will be a mighty move of the spirit. Lord, I do as you have instructed. And at the count of three, let there be breakthroughs. One, two, three. Help them, please. We command it in the name of Jesus. Bring them out. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every force that has tied down my life, you must leave me right now. Pray. As some of you are praying, the power of God will be touching you. Every spirit that is responsible. Make sure you are praying. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, only the ladies. I want to pray for you. Only the ladies. A woman represents a gate in the spirit. And there are many ladies whose gates are tied and closed. But the Bible says to open up the two leaf gates. It will surprise you what will happen to many of you right now. Please keep your hands lifted. Father, I pray in a mighty way. Let every lady's destiny that has been closed at the count of three as they shout jesus let those gates be open get set now ladies one two three open now open now open now my goodness i see padlocks opening that's what i'm seeing in the spirit open up those gates in the name of jesus Open up those gates. Open up those gates. Now. Open up those gates. Now. Open up those gates. Now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. Lift your voice and violently pray in one minute. And command that spirit to leave you. Go ahead and pray please. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you must leave my family. Just keep praying. It's a new season. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, every unclean spirit attaching itself to our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Who came with this woman? I'm seeing a spirit tying this woman. Watch this. Who came with mama? Out of her. Hold my hands, mama. Listen. She can't walk. Hold on. Mommy, this woman cannot walk well. You see this? Who? Don't worry. Mom. Stroke look at this how many of you believe god can do a miracle for this woman i command the spirit right now that spirit leave this woman right now in the name of jesus she doesn't hear very well too in the name of jesus i command the ears to be open mommy look at me lift your leg just carry it lift your leg carry it come come walk come come 
come. Look at this. Walk by yourself. Come. Come. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Listen. She doesn't hear very well. Mama. Come on, give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Come, Mama. Look at this. You know that this is a spirit that has tied this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, we end captivity. Stretch your hands and pray that the Lord will perfect everything that concerns her. This is somebody's mother. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. hallelujah mama this mama come your time of breakthrough has come hold on look at what's wrong with you my leg cannot open your leg cannot this open leg, uh, this leg uh, how long 20 something years 20 how many years uh, who knows her years. you know you are their son come now you come and stand close to your mother how many years more than 20 years. Where are you from? We are from Sabongari. Mama, you believe Jesus will touch yes, you? Yes, sir. I tell you, there is nothing Jesus cannot do. Yes, there is sir. the anointing. You believe it? Yes, sir. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Heal me. Heal me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Heal me. Heal me. Father, you died for this reason right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be healing right now. Look at what is happening to her. In the name of Jesus. Mama, hold my hands. Walk. Come. 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 Try to climb. Now, lift your leg. Try to lift it. It didn't used to open before. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, go ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift it and do what you could not do. Just do it. Do it. Open the other one in the name of Jesus. God is already giving you a miracle by the power of the Holy Spirit. Can you see a miracle happening? She could not open the leg, completely could not open it in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at look at this. God is giving this woman a eh? before she said she, she could not stand for five minutes. I cannot stand for five minutes. But right now, God is touching you. Your back will be paining you. In the name of Jesus Christ, this perfection has started. That backache, I lay my hands and I release the anointing. In the name of Jesus Christ, just keep under the anointing. She will stand up and check herself. Hallelujah. I'm seeing another mother. I don't know why God is visiting our mothers right now. I'm seeing, Mama, please come. Can I talk to you, Ma? Somebody help that woman. Please, don't, if we talk to you, speak whatever language you can speak. There will always be somebody to interpret it. It doesn't have to be that you must speak English. Whose, whose mother is this? Eh? Well done, mommy. What's, what's the issue? What brought her here? She has been complaining of different illness. Mama, what's wrong with you? I got a BP. I got a BP. This 20 day, my blood they move like this. As blade. I'm looking at our mother, Mama. As I look at you, I'm seeing something like a snake all around your stomach. That thing starts moving. Is that? And then it comes towards your chest area. Yes, then that. sometimes you feel pain at your back here. Yes, that yes. devil will leave you right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. You believe in Jesus? I'm going to pray that God will use this lady. Because I looked at her and I just saw a dove rise from her. You. What's your name? Faith. Faith. Yes, sir. You will be a woman of faith. You believe that? Let me pray for you. Father, anoint this lady. Let your power come upon her in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that God will use you mightily. Mama, let's pray for you. Lay your hands on your chest, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, God is healing you right now. High blood pressure, high blood pressure, and every other sickness. I rebuke it right now. And I command the spirit that oppresses you to leave. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now listen, if you know you are involved in anything, whether maybe you have a shop, you are in business and nothing is working, just lift your hands. I want to pray for those people right now. That's what the Holy Spirit is telling me. Please believe. Why is she out? Come, you're a mother. We can't keep you standing there. Let me just attend to her. Please, you don't have to come out. We'll attend to you. Whose mother is this? My son is outside. Your son? Okay, what's, Paul, what can Paul, we do for you? Paul. I'm weak from here downwards. You are weak from? Um, my waist downwards. downwards. But you can walk. It's just that the pain is there. The pain, I used to feel pain. I can't see it for long. Unless I lie down, I can't stand for long. Okay, mama, just clear the way. Let mama, you are her son. You are welcome. Let her just sit down there. We will soon pray for the sick. When it's time, you just bring her there so that you can hurry up. Praise the Lord. Uh, please, you don't have to come out. We are going to... Listen, listen. We are going to pray. We will invite people to come out now. We are, I'm going to pray for the sick. I will lay hands on all of you. Praise the Lord. So that we can just hurry up. If we do it one by one like this, we may not have all the time. Um, but why, why is she... Uh, my problem is one year. I'm eating... You are eating the dream. Yes. Food, you mean? One year now. For one year, non stop. Last month, on today's 15 days, my stomach, my back, in the pain. I know if sleep, I know if eat. Last, uh, last week, uh, Friday, I enter hospital. They give me medicine. I don't take all the medicine, never stop. We we'll pray Jesus Christ will set you free in the name of Jesus. Mama, you too, just go and sit down there. Please, no, our mothers, don't worry. When we start praying for the sick, this is what we'll do. We may give room so that we we'll start with some of our elderly ones so that they can go back. They may not have that strength. Will that be fine? So as you line up, if you see any elderly man or woman, you can just push them forward so that we minister to them and then they can go and sit down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But lift your hands now. I want to release breakthrough. I mean, I, I mentioned the case right now. I will praise him. I will sing to him a new song. I will praise him. I will sing to him a new song. I will praise him. I will sing to him a new song. And I will praise him. I will sing to him a new song. I will praise him. I will sing to him a new song. And I will praise him. Every force, Kabbalah, Tabarada. Keep your hands lifted. That has tied down your business. All the works of your hands. Some of you will feel fire on your hand. Literal fire. It will start burning on your hands right now. In the name that is above all names. I pray. As that fire comes on your hand. Ideas begin to come to you. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. It's already happening to people right now. It's happening to people. The fire is coming on people. Help this brother, please. The fire is coming on people right now. Your hands, ideas, ideas. This fire represents ideas. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, as we pray for the sick, I know there are many people here who are sick. Please be orderly as you come. While that is happening, every prayer request, please pass it over to the ushers. You have your prayer request. You can use the time to call some of your loved ones. By the way, 
when we begin to prophesy for some of you who have your loved ones at home you can put on the phone and connect with them honestly if they have the faith to receive and they believe they'll be surprised at what happens to them you are trusting god for a healing miracle make your way to the front now and begin to pray there is a god that heals here yeah. yes mama please don't cry can you get a handkerchief please Help our mother with this handkerchief. Please make your way to the front. It's called a miracle service. Look how many people are trusting God for healing. Forward all the elderly ones to the front. Please, all our elderly ones. Looked around and I realized That you've been so good to me standing here can we begin to talk to the Lord and say father please who am I that you are mindful of me who am I that you hear my cry when I call you how can I love you more know you more source of my strength now you the strength of my life my hope and my joy my confidence now you you're the source of my life the strength of my life my hope and my joy my confidence show you look at this oh my god put the camera here look at this can you see this person bring the person here look at this this is death already look at this i think you can can they see it on camera look at this you know that this is this is this is already this is an obituary who is her mother this is her mother crying who is her mother? Why did the mother stay outside now and bring the... Oh, she went to bring Matt. They brought the girl on his... What's wrong with her? She has been sick for over six months now, but they have been not... They have not able to... No diagnosis. You will look at her and think it's HIV. Brothers and sisters, hear me. When a spirit enters a man, it leaves out his character through that person. Okay, let's let's hear from the mother, please. What language can she speak? Kurama. Who is Kurama here? Huh? You are, please. Don't can she speak Hausa? Mama Ki Hausa? Rabuda Suki Hausa? We will never put pressure on anybody. If she can't speak Hausa, she'll speak her language. Um, what is wrong with her? What's the issue with the baby? Uh huh. that you cancer. Cancer. Uh huh. Eight. Eight. Uh -huh. Cancer. The eight took her. And Basr. Basr. What's that? Uh -huh. Pile. Cancer. HIV. Uh -huh. Look at this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Tell her she brought. She brought her expecting. No, 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 don't worry. Don't worry. 
Tell her she came expecting Jesus to touch her. Kinzo kina. Kana hausa. So say. Kede inani. Kasina. Kede kasina shine buke hia hausa. But is that not your language? Mama kari kita mu. We're going to pray for her now. Oh. We're going to pray for her. Just clear the way. Can she hear? Can I How old is she? Help her. She, she. You would think this girl is, is 10 years. She's 30 years. 30 solid years. Supposed to be married, right? With her children. She's married with two children. Oh my God. Mama? Okay. This is cancer, HIV at a terminal state. The source of my strength now you. Strength of my life now you. My open, my joy. Hey, my confidence. Source of my life. Strength of my life, my hope and my joy, my confidence. Hallelujah. My dear, my dear, can you speak English? Can you speak English? No, don't worry. Can you hear me? You can hear me. You believe Jesus can touch you? Do you believe that? Don't cry. Don't cry. Jesus is able to touch you. Father, show this lady mercy. In the name of Jesus, I curse that devil by the blood of Jesus Christ. I command that spirit of infirmity, that devil of HIV, that devil of cancer, to leave her in the name of Jesus Christ I will ask you people to help her get up eventually my dear look at me look at me in the name of Jesus Christ I release strength to you strength to you strength to you try to move your hands or your leg go ahead try to move your hand or your leg if you can do you have enough strength for that? Can she hear me? She's so weak, she can't even hear me. It's well, just leave her to lie down on the glory here as I pray for other people. I mean, she's so weak, she cannot even hear me. God, the devil is wicked. Listen, I assure you that whatever it is, what's that? Okay, the request, don't worry, we'll pray for you. Hallelujah. Just leave her to soak in the glory here while she gets some strength and try to lift her up and see what happens father i pray for everyone here let the power of god touch them in the name of jesus christ everyone came please be patient you don't have to rush the lord himself will touch you you came for a reason in the name of jesus christ you don't have to tell me what is wrong with you if i ask you you can tell me but it doesn't matter the spirit of death is on this woman. But mama, look at me. Come please. What's wrong with her? I brought myself. You brought yourself. Yes. What's wrong with you, madam? Now, since uh, where would they for Abuja? Now, in the bubble, where the bomb will blow. So, what? I'm, I'm selling something for Nyanya. Yeah. I'm selling food with her. Where the bomb will blow for that side? Bomb. Uh, oh, uh, bomb blast. Yes, I now fall down. I know I cannot get out. They carry me to go hospital. Oh, the bomb hospital. blast that happened in Nyanya. Yes. So it affected you. Eh. Uh, so I can't get out. They carry me to go hospital. So, uh, I spent four months go no go. They carry me go flying place. He collected uh, fifty thousand. Go. They no go. they carried you go where? Uh, flying man. May go treat me. Say oh. hospital no figure. A doctor. Oh, how about this? Hey, okay, the animal. it's okay. The full animal collected 50,000. You know, I've said it again. Please hear me. Listen, let me, let me press it down. Any man, I don't care who, who tells you to bring money to get a miracle, even if it's me, run away. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mama, our mothers, I'm begging you in the name of Jesus Christ. Any man, any priest, any prophet, any pastor, any apostle, any human being, herbalist, whoever, that asks you to give him money so that you give him miracle, tell him, Joshua Selman said he's a thief. He's not a man of God. Are we together? And now we start the cure the thief. The, if you give me medicine, I drink, I will bring bad, bad dream in the night. So, stay like that, four months, you go and no go. The man now time to bring 30,000 again. I said, I know even see food. That should bring 30,000 again. Uh, I know see food to to my children again now. And now start the bed, the man, no grief. That man, me, I'm going to leave for some yeah. room before. We Mommy, for some what, what? Now I come some, I come some room here. Come and say, come and I work out for prayer to prayer. But I didn't hear prayer for you. When they say, I come, I know they, I know they come. I'll just lie down, they pick pain every time. Do you know that there are spirits that stop men from going to the place of their breakthrough? Have you seen people that you try to bring for koinonia? On your way going, they just change their mind. It's not them. There is a spirit. I tell you that you make your way here alone is a sign that God is ready to visit you. Okay, what, what, what exactly? Enter today. I must enter as I just eh, come out for road. The so, machine just come. You say where the grass and at this church. He says, Oh, make a go, make go in over. Welcome the usher people. So, where well, they go, they go to my church. I know people work These people can serve God, then then carry me from machine down. They hold my hand. God carry bless our hand. ushers. I sit down. When I sit down, finish. They come, they address me. Say, make a no hurry to enter. And now where they start they play, I enter through gate. That I just stand up with my, with my now this one they take stand for all this side. And now suddenly stand up. Uh, stand. God come give me a the strength. My power. What what power. part of your body is not working very well? Yes. Now? What part? Yeah, I go so. Oh your leg. Oh I see. Father, it's, it's okay, madam. Ma mama. Uh, we, we get what is wrong with you now, eh? In Jesus' name, we we'll pray for you. If she couldn't walk, oh, there is a spirit at work in you. That spirit will leave you now. I command that devil, leave her. You think it's bomb blast. But, oh, she could not walk, oh. They had to carry her, and now she's even standing. That's even a miracle. In the name of Jesus. Madam, Look at me. Hold my hands. I minister strength to you. Look at me. Come. Come. Help her. In the name of Jesus. Walk. I will hold you. Walk. Okay, look at me. Look at me. Start walking by yourself. Come. Came on a bike. Could not walk. Come. Slowly. Just take it slowly. Look at this. You can see that it's happening gradually. Gradually. These hands were paralyzed. Madam, look at me. Try to lift it up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Lift it. Lift it. Lift it. Look at this. Lift it. Lift it. Drop it down. Lift it again. Lift it again. Completely paralyzed. Completely paralyzed. Look at. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. A miracle is happening. Do what you couldn't do. The devil is a liar. The more you take that step of faith, the more you see God stepping in. Father, this miracle is perfected in her body in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Just keep exercising her. We'll have to pray. Please, any special case, we'll minister it. Our time is gone. I saw the spirit of death. She was supposed to die in that bomb blast. I didn't even know it was Nyanya bomb blast. That Boko Haram bomb blast. May you never be a victim of any man's wickedness. In the name of Jesus Christ. The moment I pray for you, please, as you return back, check yourself and do what you couldn't do before. If it's a striking, striking testimony, we'll just take it here. Worship team, lead us through sessions of worship as we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus.
tell me they can't, you can't say you can't say anything. You've been going to where, sir? Uh, Shika. Yes. What did they say is wrong with you, sir? They say they they but what do you feel? That's what I'm asking. That is a short of blood. Short of blood. Yes. I look at you, sir, and your face has changed to the face of a cat. This is what licks your blood. This is what I'm seeing. This is demonic. You understand what I'm saying? There was a time you had a dream and a dog was following you. Dog. Dog was pursuing you. And I need to pray for you because this is a manifestation of the spirit of death. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that spirit, that devil of darkness to leave. Please stand in and connect for your loved ones. We have so many people. Let's see how far we can. stretch your hands at this baby and let's close this hole in the name of Jesus you will have a child make sure you are praying one month two weeks a hole in his heart if God does not step in this baby will either die or something will happen I tell you we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ we can agree father we reject this we reject this as you are rejecting it for this child so it will be in your life reject it lord your church is praying we change this report baby we speak to you baby you will not die you will not die you will not die we close this hole hallelujah go and check him don't cry don't cry eh? you are not going to lose your baby in the name of jesus christ amen we are going to pray it's going to be very very fast as i lay my hands on you just it's just a touch there is a reason why i'm doing this myself and i lay hands on you just a touch the Lord is wiping your tears the Lord is wiping your tears and not just because you are crying physically this woman is coming with so much pains the Lord is wiping your tears now 
the name of Jesus out of her that demon that causes pain the name of Jesus Christ Yes, in your 
and cause that spirit you must let her go now because in your submit a prayer request ushers you can begin to bring the prayer request forward please everybody inside and outside make sure you don't miss this next session because that's where you get to receive your personal breakthrough so please forward the prayer request if you still have yours just lift it up and an usher will come to you quickly please guys let's do this very fast so that we can finish as hands have been laid on you I just want you to believe that God is touching you
This is, this is, it's not a religious activity. It's an instruction that God gave us. Because you see, no matter how I lay hands on everybody one by one, we may not have all the time for everybody to state what their needs are. But then let me tell you something. The truth about it is that I'm not the most important person in this meeting. There is one who is mightier than I. You didn't write this request to Joshua Selman. I will not even read one of them. This is unto the God who can solve problems. Mommy, please come. Yes. I've been looking at this woman and I've been wondering what it is that God, what would you want God to do for you? To give me a quality spouse. To give you a quality spouse. This is what I'm looking at this woman and 
my heart had been drawn to her for a while. Madam, you want to get married because you are not afraid and ashamed to say this in the presence of the people. Look at me. I stake my reputation on this prophecy that I will give you. You hear me? If a man does not come to marry you, go and publish it in a newspaper that I lied. You believe what I'm saying? I will not implicate myself and be a fool like this. Because as soon as I looked at you, you said spouse. I saw a man putting a ring in your hand. That's why I'm telling you what I'm saying. You believe this? Be sure to return and give the testimony. And everybody be sure to look at her. You are seeing her today. When she comes back with her husband, so you don't say that this is stage managed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, just cover her. I'm going to pray. Let me have, okay, it's Prof's water. I wish there's any other one just to pray on it and then they'll give her. She's too weak. We can't even test her whether or not. But I see her moving her legs and moving all of this. This is ordinary. Okay, this is ordinary water. We'll just pray on it. Since that's the only thing. She can achieve, isn't she? But achieve, isn't she? Say me. Roa. Roa ka bata kada. Tozan ya dua ko. E se se ajana bata. Ache yenzu da sati da. Ana bata kada. Father, I pray that this water will lose its earthly significance and take on a heavenly significance. That as she takes this, oh God, let this be um, a cleansing agent. Let it be like a drug in her body. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can she hear you? Ask her how she's feeling now. I'm sorry, I forget this. Thing, so I'm like, yeah, you see she's gaining some strength she couldn't move before but we see her gaining some strength Uncle, you don't can you see her gaining some strength she's even moving she's pushing her away same issue something is happening to her look at this are you seeing? Look at this. Look at this by herself. Oh. This is the power of the Lord. This in itself is a miracle. If you saw the way they brought her. Mama, brother. The Holy Spirit is doing something in her life. My dear, as God grants you grace, you can just be moving your body gradually. We prayed on this. And um, Mama Gashi, Abata, Bakuaban is a shark for Amata Dua. There was a son about it. If you keep it there, all these children will come and take you. Thank you, Jesus. Stretch your hands on this prayer request as we pray. Let's pray on this request. Hallelujah. Please stretch your hands and let's ask the Lord to visit us. This is the greatest point of contact to your requests. This is the greatest point of contact to your requests. Father, we are praying right now in the name of Jesus. We are praying by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let there be a miracle. Let there be miracles. Let there be miracles. I'm seeing the Lord giving people miracles of jobs. Jobs. I see employment of jobs. I see a family that dropped a request here. Something about building a house. And it looks like you will not complete it. The Lord is saying before December 25th, you will enter that house. Please pray. Father, visit me. Talk to the Lord. Tell him your request is here.
let there be miracles oh god let there be miracles in the name of jesus every request here to a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ requests of marriages may they be granted some of you have dropped requests here because the admission list came out and you did not see your name Lord we agree I don't know how you would do it but we agree that there be miracles In the name of Jesus. Lord, we release breakthroughs. We release all kinds of miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your hands as I prophesy. Everyone. I have grown to respect the power of prophecy. I know that for many of you if I tell you which will you choose to prophesy over your life or to lay hands on you you would prefer the laying on of hands because it looks like there is a physical contact not so prophecy is powerful very powerful please I want you to shout amen from the depth of your heart this is where you get to receive everything shout amen this is where the fire gets to fall on your life this is where everybody participates in the name of jesus christ I command breakthroughs to come into your life supernatural breakthrough receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. please lay your hands on your head I pray father mm, this will come mighty on some of you a baptism of the spirit of wisdom Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it now. Now, wisdom, help him please. Wisdom in the powerful name of Jesus. Supernatural wisdom. Understanding. Receive the impartation. Wisdom in business. Wisdom in career. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for anyone who is confused here. Trusting God for direction. In the name of Jesus. May the voice of God come to you. And bring you direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything you have tried and tried to do. And have not been able to do. I speak over your life go back and do it again go back and do it again in the name of Jesus the kind of favor you have not seen from January till now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may that favor come upon your life may that favor come upon your life receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus Where are the helpers who are supposed to help your destiny and have refused to locate you wherever they are everybody in life needs a helper 
to move to the next level between you and the next level is the ministry of a helper right now everything that has died in your hands i don't care what it is i'm prophesying to you everything that has died in your hands by the anointing of the holy spirit that same voice that called lazarus from the grave right now calls that dying business from the grave calls that dying destiny from the grave in the name of jesus christ everything that is dead in your life comes alive now hallelujah every spirit that torments you and your family in any way in dreams in visions i declare right now they are silenced forever in your life they are silenced forever in your life anyone trusting god for a job or you are standing in for someone trusting God for a job the hands that are lifted in the name of Jesus the same way they are lifted above your head that's how they'll be lifted above joblessness in the name of Jesus I release jobs by the power of the Holy Spirit whatever has covered your glory so that it is not seen and celebrated in the name of the lord god of israel i command that veil be torn into pieces every one of your family members that has been locked up by satan and stagnated in one place we release them right now 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 in the name of Jesus Christ anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death the devil is already planning that you and your family will celebrate Christmas in tears we come with a prophetic word and we declare that death cancelled in the name of Jesus death is cancelled in the name of Jesus death is cancelled in the name of Jesus I pray for every business in this place every business every shop every enterprise receive the wisdom of God receive the strength of God in the name of Jesus Christ between now and next week koinonia I pray that everyone will return with at least one testimony in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your spiritual life whatever has died in your life spiritually I command a restoration right now restoration of prayer life restoration of word life in the name of Jesus Christ every discouragement in your life and every voice that keeps speaking to you that you will never make it any devil speaking to you that you will be like those who have failed we silence that voice right now by the blood of Jesus every legal access Satan has over anyone's life we declare that that access is broken in Jesus name everyone called barren we bring that barrenness to an end biological barrenness financial barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ where you have failed go back and succeed where they have ignored you go back and be celebrated in the name of Jesus listen I prophesy to you 
you will operate in a level of grace a level of grace that will cause men to look at you like a wonder i speak it upon your life in the name of jesus christ the same grace that can make a man become an object of discussion the grace that can make a man become an object of wonder may it come upon your life i pray for your dreams and visions all the ideas god has been trying to bring that the devil has hijacked in the spirit we command that they must be released they must be released we release the ideas we release the concepts we release the insights in the name of jesus from today i declare that as you speak it may you see it as you speak it may your hands handle it for those who are trusting god for restoration i pray for you i don't know what you have lost i command a tenfold restoration hallelujah believe what i'm telling you some of you it will do you like a dream it will be like you just woke up and say no i'm not the one may it happen to you in the name of jesus christ someone will call you and tell you they have been trying to reach you for a long time just to bless you in the name of jesus christ listen some of you will be sitting quietly in your house that's how favor will come and meet you and take you to another level in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i bring to an end every struggle in your life by the anointing of the holy spirit i pray for every pastor every leader here grace for the next level those of you who have come from other places take the fire and take it back to your regions take the fire and take it back to your regions in the name of jesus christ nothing dies in your hands nothing becomes barren in your hands in the name of jesus christ favor on all sides blessings on all sides in the mighty name of jesus christ hallelujah now very quickly we're out of time please keep standing everybody there are people here who are saying lord jesus i'm committing my life and my all to you please keep standing everybody no movements around there are people inside and outside here you came for this meeting and you have seen what the lord jesus christ has done and you are saying lord i want to surrender my life i've been living my life the way i want but i want to hand it over to you tonight some of you are giving your life to christ for the first time some of you are rededicating your life you said I've, I've come out once but something has happened in my life wherever you are in the next one minute i know many people outside those inside please join them come out here and i will lead you to give your life to jesus christ wherever you are young old don't sit down wait for anybody koinonia celebrate them make your way to the front don't be embarrassed this is what jesus can do with your life you've given people who are less than him your life why don't you commit everything i know this is not all there are still people inside and outside please make your way quickly god bless you as you come make your way quickly hallelujah while the rest join them god bless you keep coming quickly please hurry up and join them catch up with them it's a decision that will change your life forever we may not know who you are but we know where you are going because with jesus your journey is secured you've lived your life anyhow and you're saying i'm tired of playing games with god i want to make it right there is always room for you the throne is where you start from hallelujah praise the lord jesus i want you to lift your right hand and say after me lord jesus please say it very seriously say lord jesus i love you with all my heart i believe in you tonight i surrender my life completely to you take everything about me use me for your glory in the name of jesus i receive eternal life into my spirit from today i'm not the same person again the power of sin is broken over my life in jesus name father i pray for these ones whose hands are lifted bless them 
they have made a decision for you they remain in you forever give them a new life in the name of jesus christ may the lord bless you in the name of jesus now i'd like you to follow the ushers they are waving their hands they'll have your details and they'll welcome you more warmly very quickly madam we're finished praying tap that madam she can follow them hallelujah praise the lord now all those who are worshiping with us for the first time very quickly one minute make your way to the front we want you to go back with an anointing and with a blessing honor them koinonia they are the result of your prayers our mothers our fathers our brothers and sisters thank you so much thank you so much they are the result of our prayers our commitment we prayed and asked the lord to bring you and bless you look how many people god is bringing come on celebrate jesus hallelujah now very quickly thank you so much sas mass thank you for coming this is koinonia a meeting put together by eternity network international we're here every hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you